Genetic testing and IVF and infertility can get really confusing. If you are wondering what all those acronyms are and exactly what is right for you, you are gonna wanna watch this video. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a board certified reproductive endocrinologist and fertility doctor helping people build families for over 15 years. And I want you to watch this video if you wanna learn more about what genetic testing options are available for your embryos, because there's three different kinds and it's important to understand exactly what your options are and exactly what is right for you. So many of my patients can get really confused about what options are available and exactly what we're testing on embryos. If you're feeling that way, you are not alone and I want you to understand. When we talk about genetic screening of embryos, genetic testing of embryos, the healthcare providers, doctors, nurses can throw around all these different acronyms, PGT, PGTA, CS, CCS, just all these different things. You can hear the words pre-implantation genetic testing, pre-implantation genetic screening, pre-implantation single gene testing. Like everybody was using all these different terms. And finally, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine said, whoa, 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 we all got to use the same terms. And so they came out with three basic terms. They all start with pre-implantation genetic testing. And then what's different is on the end, PGTA for aneuploidy, PGTM for monogenic or single gene disorder testing, and then PGTSR, which is structural rearrangements of chromosomes. I'm going to help you understand what this is. A little bit more of an overview. Not everybody does genetic testing on their embryos, but you have the option to do so. And it's important to talk to your doctor about what's right for you before you even get started with your IVF cycle. So make sure you watch my other videos here that teach you all about IVF, but a little bit of a recap. You know, you take medications, gonadotropins, to stimulate the ovaries to make multiple eggs. We do an egg retrieval to get the eggs out of the body, got the eggs in the lab. We get sperm, we help the eggs and sperm fertilize, and then we watch those embryos grow. And when the embryos are um, about five or six days old, they're about 100 to 120 cells, they're called blastocysts. These are mature embryos. And we can actually freeze the embryos at this time. And before we freeze them, we can biopsy some of the cells away. So if the embryo is about 100 cells, we're actually taking away five to 10 cells to test. We freeze the embryos. The embryos don't leave the embryology lab. They stay. It's just the cells that get sent to test. And at the lab that tests them, the lab needs to know exactly what you want them to test for. And so this pre-implantation genetic testing is testing the embryos, biopsying the embryos, and then freezing them and waiting until you know what you have in the embryo before you do the transfer. Before the embryo implants, you know if it's got a structural rearrangement or a single gene disorder or et cetera. And so that's where that pre-implantation genetic testing term comes from. Um, you can only test embryos if you do IVF. You have to get the eggs and sperm out of the body and test the embryos out of the body, and then you can do an embryo transfer. So the first one we'll talk about is PGTM. That stands for pre-implantation genetic testing for monogenic or single gene disorder. So PGTM is the process of testing cells of an embryo for a single gene disorder. And so this could be genes that lead to disease like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, Tay-Sachs disease, muscular dystrophy. So some people know that they carry genetic disorders in their family. Maybe they have a child with cystic fibrosis and that's how they found out that they carried that mutation. Or they have a mutation themselves for something, something like Huntington's disease, which is a neurologic disease that really only manifests um, later in life. But it's something that you're born with. It's a genetic disease that you're born with. If you know that you have the risk of having a child with this genetic disease, you can actually test embryos beforehand and decrease the risk of passing this gene on. Now, the trick is for this type of testing, you have to know what you're looking for. It's actually pretty hard to find little tiny mutations. It's like a needle in a haystack with all this genetic material that comes from the cells of the embryo and you need to know beforehand. So the people who are getting pregnant, the person with the eggs and the person with the sperm needs to do what's called carrier screening before they 
do IVF to know if there's anything to look for. I've had patients say, well, yeah, you've got my embryos anyway. Why don't you just test for all those different diseases when you've got them out of my body anyway? Well, it just doesn't work that way. We just don't get enough DNA. You can actually test for hundreds and hundreds of different mutations, but the technology requires that you need to know what you're looking for. I talk to my patients, not everybody does it, but I talk to my patients about doing carrier screening before they get pregnant or before they do an IVF cycle to see if they're at risk. Because someone can actually carry a mutation for cystic fibrosis and not have it and have nobody in their family have it. And if they happen to marry someone else with that exact same mutation, then they have a 25% risk of having a child with cystic fibrosis. So you can carry a gene, like a mutation in a gene that leads to disease, but a lot of diseases, you have to carry two mutations, one inherited from the egg, one inherited from the sperm in order to have that disease in the child. So the reason that this is so rare is that there's hundreds of mutations for cystic fibrosis, and it really is very rare for someone to find somebody else with that exact same mutation, but it can happen. And I do have people coming to my practice who had a child with a genetic disease, and that's how they found out that they carried this mutation. And they're actually coming to do IVF, not because they're having difficulty getting pregnant, but they're doing it in order to screen those embryos um, to decrease the risk of having another child that's affected. Because there are some genetic diseases that really result in significant hardship and even neonatal death like really soon. I know it's hard to talk about. It's amazing what technology can do and what options are open to you. Now, if you find out that you carry the same mutation, it doesn't mean that you absolutely have to test your embryos for it. Not every embryo will be affected. And some people are like, well, I think it's okay if we inherit that particular thing. I've had patients with polycystic kidney disease. Um, that's a genetic disease that you inherit from both of your, you know, egg and sperm, and and it can affect um, the kidneys can be enlarged and have a little bit of kidney dysfunction, but they can live full, happy, great lives. And so sometimes people can find out that they carry mutations, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to test your embryos. It's a really a personal decision, but it's really good to be able to have that discussion and choice um, and know whether that's right for you or not. It is uh, amazing what science can do and it's absolutely incredible, but big picture is you gotta test beforehand. Um, it takes a while to build that probe if you do decide to have your embryos tested for it and not everybody has to do this. And so talk to your doctor about carrier screening to see if it's right for you. The second type of genetic testing on embryos is pre-implantation genetic testing for SR, structural rearrangement. And just like testing for single gene disorders, PGTM, with PGTSR, you have to know what you're looking for before you actually do that testing on the embryos. So in this case, it's not a single gene disorder that can cause a disease. It's if the person with the eggs or person with the sperm has something called a balanced translocation in their own chromosomes, then you can look for that in embryos. Let me explain. <laughs> I know it's confusing. A balanced translocation is uh, something that's very rare but it's something that we look for if a couple is having recurrent pregnancy loss or recurrent miscarriages, because the most common cause of miscarriage is a chromosome imbalance or genetic rearrangement in the embryo that is not compatible with live birth. And people who are getting pregnant that have a balanced translocation, a lot of their gametes, whether it's eggs or sperm, will have structural chromosomal rearrangements and they will have a higher chance of miscarriage as a couple if one of the people carries a balanced translocation. So the way this is discovered is not everybody gets this testing. The way you figure out if you have a balanced translocation is you do a blood test and people who you think about doing this test on are typically people who have had 
two or more miscarriages. That's the definition of recurrent miscarriage. It's a standard evaluation for somebody with recurrent miscarriage, just like a uterine cavity evaluation or checking thyroid levels. You know, I have written a whole book on recurrent miscarriage. I just really want people to understand there's so many mis misunderstandings, confusion around recurrent miscarriage. So if you really want to learn more about that, I encourage you to read my book, Not Broken. You can find it on Amazon, but I've got a whole chat chapter on evaluation of recurrent miscarriage and I talk a lot about balance translocation. The most common time that I'm talking about balance translocation, I'm actually counseling um, a couple that is having miscarriages together. And there's usually so many tests that the person with a uterus, you know, the women have to do, you know, anatomy testing and blood work and all this kind of stuff for the person with sperm, the male partner, I usually do a semen analysis. And then like the one blood test I insist on is a balanced translocation. So when I'm counseling patients, I'm usually like, hey, listen, I'm going to talk about the guy. Like if you have a balanced translocation, what that means is, is when the egg and sperm came together to make you, yes, I know you have to think about your parents, but anyway, when the egg and sperm came together to make you, you know, all those chromosomes line up together and then they split apart. And remember biology class, those X's and those chromosomes. So when the egg and sperm come together, all those chromosomes line up and then they split apart. And if there's a mistake in the lineup and there's an exchange of material between two chromosomes, it could be a piece of chromosome number eight um, ends up on chromosome number 11. And that portion of number 11 ends up on number eight. It's a balanced translocation. So that genetic information is on the wrong chromosome, but when that exchange happened, there was no loss of material. There's no missing genetic information. All the genetic materials there and all the cells of the body, you know, of the male partner that I'm usually like picking on when I'm trying to explain this. So if you have a balanced translocation, if that male partner has a balanced translocation, he's not missing any genetic material in the cells in his body, that all the chromosome has that. But when he goes to make sperm, when you make sperm, the chromosome material lines up and splits apart. Some of the sperm is going to have total normal chromosome content, and some of the sperm is going to be missing big portions of chromosomes. And that is why he is more likely to have miscarriages or a couple with one of the partners who has a balanced translocation. Um, they're going to have more miscarriages because a lot of the gametes, whether it's sperm or eggs, are going to be missing material. Now, people with balanced translocation don't always have miscarriages. The most common presentation is a live birth intermixed with a lot of miscarriages, like more miscarriages than you would expect for a couple, whatever age they are. But some of the sperm is going to be just fine. It's just that if you find this, then you know why you're having more miscarriages than you would expect. And you can talk to your doctor about the option of screening embryos for that structural rearrangement. All this stuff is not black and white. It's just important to realize what we're looking for and what you can do. So again, the most common time that this comes up for me is I'm counseling a patient with recurrent miscarriages. We do the evaluation and it comes back that they have a balanced translocation. And I say, hey, this is what you have. I go through that whole explanation. And then I say, one option for you is to keep trying. The next time you get pregnant, it could be a perfectly normal embryo and they have a baby, but you are at a higher risk of having another miscarriage. And so one option for you would be to do IVF and test those embryos for chromosome content. So when you transfer an embryo, you know it doesn't have a chromosome structural rearrangement. You have a lower chance of miscarriage. So that's another thing that you have to know beforehand before you can test the embryos, just like the PGTM where you're looking for a monogenic or single gene disorder. Are you with me? I know it's a lot. And the third type of genetic testing. Now, this is the most common pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. This is what most people do if they do genetic testing on embryos for IVF. That's why I save the best for last. So this is, again, biopsying the embryo before you freeze it and knowing more about the genetic content of the embryo before you transfer it. What you do with those cells in the specialty lab is they're testing for all the chromosomes. Every time an egg and sperm come together, they give half of the genetic 
material and it's in the form of chromosomes. So half of the chromosomes come from the egg and half of the chromosomes come from the sperm. And when they come together, they all line up. If it's balanced chromosome content, you have a very high chance of live birth. If it's imbalanced, then you have a high chance of the embryo not implanting. So getting a negative pregnancy test or miscarriage because the most common cause of miscarriage is a chromosome rearrangement in that embryo. And what is different about the other types of genetic testing on these embryos is every time an egg and sperm come together, it has a chance of doing it right or the chance of doing it wrong. So if an egg hangs on to a number seven chromosome, then the egg's gonna be giving two copies and the sperm is gonna give a copy and that is too many copies, that's triploidy. And that embryo is not gonna be successful. If the um, either the egg or sperm isn't giving enough genetic material, if you're missing a chromosome and you only have one chromosome, number two, that is monosomy. And that embryo, it can look beautiful under the microscope, but when you transfer it, it is not gonna be successful. And each embryo is unique. Now you don't have to do any pre-testing on the person with the eggs or the person with the sperm in order to do this type of genetic testing because each time an egg and sperm come together, it's a possibility of doing it right or doing it wrong. So this is not something that you screen for in the people that are getting pregnant and then look for later. This is testing each individual embryo and seeing what happens. Now, whether you do chromosomal screening or not for aneuploidy, aneuploidy means incorrect chromosome content, unbalanced chromosome content, whether you do that or not is really personal. So I talk to my patients about it being optional. Um, I think I'm going to definitely need to make a whole video on this. But in general, common patients that I have that choose and opt to do genetic testing on their embryos are patients that have had multiple miscarriages because it can decrease the risk of miscarriage. Advanced reproductive age is a common indication for doing um, aneuploidy screening on embryos. If people are doing embryo creation for fertility preservation, they're not going to use these embryos for a few years for whatever reason. Um, it makes a lot of sense to really know what you have frozen because again, not every embryo is going to be a baby. And it's, um, I think of this pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy as an embryo selection tool, finding embryos that have the highest chance of implantation, the lowest risk of miscarriage. And it has done wonders in the field for decreasing the risk of twins, triplets, and high risk multiple gestation pregnancies. Before we were doing chromosomal screening on embryos as much as we do now, it was routine to transfer five or six untested embryos in someone that was 40. And we were so happy if someone got pregnant because we know that as eggs and sperm age, not all of them are perfect. And then if somebody got twins, we were like, sorry, or triplets, oh my God, the high risk pregnancy. Now we can screen these embryos and have a very high success rate with transferring one embryo at any age. It's just, it's really amazing. I know that is a lot of information, but it is really important to get this stuff before you go through IVF and you're trying to decide sort of last minute. So let's go over the three different types of pre-implantation genetic testing of your embryos. Number one, PGTM, pre-implantation genetic testing for monogenic or single gene disorders. So these are mutations that the parents can carry and you're trying to test for them in the embryo to um, decrease the risk of genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, Tay-Sachs disease, etc. The second is PGTSR, pre-implantation genetic testing for structural rearrangement. And this is looking for issues within the embryo that could be passed from a parent that has a balanced translocation on to that embryo. So you're trying to select for embryos that have normal chromosome content and not this structural rearrangement, but you're looking for something specific. And finally, the most common one, PGTA or pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. And this is not something that people pass on to their embryos. This is something that is unique to each embryo. Every time an egg sperm comes together, it has the opportunity of doing that chromosome lineup correctly 
or incorrectly, and you're trying to select for embryos that have a balanced chromosome content, because those are the ones that have the highest chance of success when you transfer them. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I know this genetic testing stuff, it can be really confusing, but it doesn't have to be. And I hope you've learned a lot that you can go to your doctor and ask questions and advocate for your care. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel, and stick around because I'm going to link some more videos here all about IVF.